What's up everybody, I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade and Z-Wade Photo, and I was just working on some images for a video that's coming up, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss it. We had a large get-together in the city of Wichita, Kansas, and I used the Nikkor Z 20mm f1.8 extensively, and I know that that lens is, is awesome, right? But I've mostly shot real low to the ground kind of autumn like stuff you know like leaves and things like that but i hadn't really got it out to do some street photography with it and i don't want to spoil the whole video but it might be the best lens in the nikon lineup as of february 2023 and we're gonna look at why right now okay so here we are at the first edit surprise this is not an edit and that's exactly why i'm making this video today if we look down here i'll zoom in on this for you it is zw98673.nef that is a raw image and it's just slightly underexposed which is typically what i do i usually do one stop underexposed if we correct for this about like that plus 0.55 just look how thick and contrasty and colorful this is. It's also insanely sharp. Although we do have a little bit of fringing, perhaps. And this is at F2. Who cares? You can't tell. And it just... <laughs> I can't believe this lens. Moving on to another image. This is shot at F1.8. And besides some of the really, really bright areas, not that much fringing. And I mean, it just looks so, this is what I call juicy guys. It is so thick looking and it's because of its contrast. Just give it a little more contrast. It's insane. We're gonna, we're gonna edit one of these, but I mean, just look, just look. Okay. Not even looking at like where the focus point is, right? I don't care where the focus point is. I mean, it's sharp, it's in focus in the area that I want it to be focused, but the contrast of it i don't i just don't think there's another lens in the system right now that is this like a dynamic looking again not edited at all and this one really made me go wow this is perhaps a little underexposed uh, from what i normally shoot but it's shot at f 5.6 64 iso and just look how rich. Guys, this is a brick wall with some painting on it. And it is so like chunky looking. It's it's so like robust. You've heard me say robust like probably a thousand times on my channel. And I mean, it already has a silly amount of contrast. If you just add some to it, we'll do a Lightroom edit right here. I mean, come on. Sure, it has a little vignette, who cares? I usually add some anyway. In fact, I'll add some right now. Look how rich that is. Guys, absolutely effortless. We're not done looking at images, but I just wanted to blow my face up real quick because I wanted to say, when you hear me talk about how lenses used to be a lot more fun back in the day when you selected a certain lens for a certain look, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Mirrorless camera lenses are notorious for being kind of flat, but like optically perfect, right? This is like has some insane contrast character, right? It has so much contrast that it is characteristic of this lens. And I've, I'm just raving about it. Let's get back to, to like one or two more images. Let's just, let's just get in here real quick before we move on. I mean, it's so sharp and detailed. And because it has so much contrast, you get every little tiny little striation in full detail, even, you know, at here, let's go ahead and fit it. I mean, you can see every single bit of that that I was just zoomed in on. Again, just super, super rich, amazingly colorful. This ain't nothing compared to this. Look at the yellows. I mean, tell me this doesn't look like you took a regular raw image and took the clarity and went whoop, and you took the contrast and went whoop, and it is raw. Nothing has been done to it. Look, there, I mean, there's nothing. No color, saturation, no saturation, no, no presence, no nothing. It is just like this. 
Now I've already edited these for the video that's coming up. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss it. It's coming up soon. But I just want to jump into Luminar Neo real quick. One, because they're kind enough to sponsor me. And two, I want to see what presets it will suggest because I didn't run presets on these. If you want to give Luminar a try yourself, look in the description below, full disclosure. I get a little bit of a commission if you do that, but the presets are a lot of fun to mess with and they can save you some time. Okay, so let's look at this one first. It's recommending Blockbuster, which I've done quite a few with. We don't want to do film noir because I kind of want to, I want something with color. Although that looks pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> it's a little too cool for me. Oh yeah, I like this one. Teal and orange, of course. Speedway is a uh, kind of similar to what it was. Kind of like the teal and orange, which I got burnt out on <laughs> because of Instagram. Ooh, I like this one. This is called Travel Log. This is kind of a uh, Black Paris soft box. I've used this one with a lot of portraits. And I know for a fact that that dark forest is good. I like dark forest with with portraits and a uh, cold frame. Oh, we skipped sunshine. Oh, I like this one. This one's kind of filmy. <laughs> I think I kind of really like this one in Black Paris. Let's check out this one here. This one's recommending uh, easy landscapes. Of course it is. Ooh, we hit the nail on the head with the first one. Just, <laughs> just to, to make this video something. I don't like this one. It's too green. The clean light is is pretty good. Noir skate. Four stream. That one's a little uh, too natural. Let's go into urban style. This is the last recommendation. I'm not liking a lot of these so far. Toronto's too cold. Melbourne's too flat. Abbey Street's too flat for a black and white. New York, if any of them, it's it's this one. I like that. It's a little crunchy, so like that's cool. It's a little flat on the outside, which is kind of nice. It's almost like a matted vignette. I think I would just add back some of the contrast, and so let's go ahead and do that. Do some smart contrast. And then I want to go down to this little thing that I like here, the dramatic slider, and add like a lot of that. <laughs> and actually, maybe relight. Right there. No. Boom, right there. I like that. Super contrasty in the center and still kind of soft and lacking in contrast in the vignetted area. You add some vignette. Boom. I like that. Okay, we have got one more and it's this magnificent shot. Well, it's not a magnificent shot. It's by no means a, a piece of art, but <laughs> it looks really good. So let's go into Blockbuster. I definitely don't want to do Film Noir because I want it to be uh, in color. This is, well, we can see what it looks like. Beyond the Wall isn't working for me. It's too blue. Oh, baby. <laughs> Film Noir actually looks really good. Yeah, I think I like this one. Let's see what it looked like before. Yeah, I would say this one's a, a, a winner. So let's just go ahead and pop into edit and let's just do a little bit. Add a little more contrast. Pull some highlights. Whoop. Pull some shadows. Actually, let me try giving it some. I like that better. Let's give it some whites. Pull some blacks. Let's go into our trusty dramatic slider. Yeah, give, a, give us a little HDR. It's a little too much. Let's pull back on the local contrast. <clears throat> I want to try this glow. This works beautifully on portraits, but I go into this type and instead of soft focus, I go glow. It's given us, a looks like it's targeting the building. See, that's what it is before. And after, I like that. And let's go into our super contrast. <laughs> it's a bad idea to give me more contrast than, than what's normal. Now I'm thinking that the blues are a little too blue. 
And so I want to get into my colors and individually bring those down. Yeah, we're going to go to saturation. And like I said, the blues are just a little too blue. And so we'll just pull those a little or maybe a lot. Okay, we fixed that right there. And let's do a little vignette and I'd call this one done. Boom, there it is. Uh, maybe one of Nikon's best lenses ever as far as contrast and color goes. In the comments below, let me know if you agree with my assessment of the Nikkor Z 20mm f 1.8s. Also, let me know what your current favorite Nikkor Z lens is and what you think the best one in the entire lineup is as of right now. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo, and we'll talk soon.